Hi everyone, welcome to another video in the Transformer series from PyML Studio. In this video, we are going to cover variants of multi-head attention. So we'll see a recap of MHA and then its drawback, especially in the incremental inference. And then we'll go over two variants, namely multi-query attention and grouped query attention. So let's get started. We have already covered MHA in more detail in another previous video. As a quick recap, MHA was proposed in the Transformer paper in 2017 titled Attention is all you need by Vaswani et al. This is the diagram of MHA using multiple query, key, and value matrices. So first, we perform dot product attention on each head composed of a triple matrices Q, K, and V. And then we concatenate the results. So let's expand these multiple heads and their operations if we have H heads, then we get H queries, H keys, and H values as shown here with H equal to 8. Now in each head, we perform dot product between Q and the K matrices, that is Q, K transpose, which are shown with the dashed lines. Then we scale the results, apply softmax function shown as F here, and then finally multiply that by matrix V. This is performed in each head, so we get H outputs, and then we concatenate them all together. Now, what are the drawbacks of multi-head attention? When doing incremental inference, for example, incremental generation, that is, the transformer incrementally generates some output text. In such applications, we need to repeatedly load these large key and value matrices into memory. And as a result, the memory bandwidth becomes the bottleneck in these computations. So let's see two approaches for dealing with this memory bandwidth issue. The first approach is multi-query attention, or MQA for short, which was proposed in this paper, Fast Transformer Decoder, one right head is all you need. This paper tries to address the memory bandwidth problem in incremental inference, and as we will see, they gain significant speed up with some minor quality degradation. So let's see how MQA works. In multi-query attention, we still have H query heads as shown here, but we use a single key and a single value head. Then we perform dot product of all these queries with the same shared key matrix. So we will get H different products of Q, K transpose. Then each one of these QK transpose products are scaled by 1 over a square root of D, and next we compute the output head as the softmax of this scaled QK transpose multiplied by the single value matrix V. This results in H output heads, which we will concatenate them together to get the original representation dimensionality D or D model. So now, how is the performance of MQA compared to MHA? Our first criteria is the computational time. Here in this table, we are looking at the TPU V2 time per token in microseconds. As we can see in this table, MQA is able to achieve significant speed up, reducing the time from 203 microseconds to 32 microseconds. Our next criteria is model quality for which we look at the perplexity of the billion word language modeling benchmark. And we can see that MQA has a slightly worse results as its perplexity is slightly higher than MHA. So this means that we get some minor quality degradation, but we gained a significant speed up. The next approach is grouped query attention or GQA for short. GQA was proposed in this 2023 paper titled GQA, Training Generalized Multi-Query Transformers from Multi-Head Checkpoints. In this paper, the authors propose an approach for converting the saved checkpoints of a multi-head transformer to a multi-query transformer for faster inference. But in addition, they also propose GQA as a new architecture that can control the trade-off between a speed gain and the amount of quality degradation. So instead of having a single key and value for all the queries, they define subgroup of queries and use a single key and value per subgroup. 
Let's see how that works in more details. Let's start with the queries. Assume we have H heads and H is set to 8 for visualization purposes. And let's assume that we have four subgroups of these queries. That means in each subgroup, we have two queries. For each subgroup, we also get one key and one value. Now for the computations. We compute the dot product of each query with the single key of the same subgroup. So we get H products Q, K transpose. Then we scale them and apply softmax, multiply the results with the V matrix in their corresponding subgroup. At the end, we get eight output heads as shown here, which we will concatenate them together to get the final output. Now let's put these three models MHA, MQA and GQA side by side and compare them. We have the same number of queries in all three, that is eight queries in this visualization. The difference is in the keys and values. In MHA, we have eight keys and eight values. But in MQA, we only have a single key and a single value, while GQA has four keys and four values. Note that we can consider GQA as a generalized version of both MQA and MHA, as we can choose the number of subgroups to be any divisors of H. For example, with H equals 8, we can have 1, 2, 4, or 8 subgroups. If we choose to have just one subgroup that is identical to MQA, and if we choose the number of subgroups to be equal to H, that would be identical to MHA. Now let's compare the performance of these models. This figure shows the performance versus time for all these methods. While MHA has the best performance, it's also the slowest method, and MQA is the fastest. But GQA is able to achieve similar speed up as the MQA, while its performance is in the same level as MHA. Finally, this figure shows a case with 64 total number of heads, and GQA can go from 1 that is identical to MQA, all the way to the maximum number of subgroups to be 64, that would be identical to MHA. But you can see that going from 1 up to 8 subgroups does not add significant computational overhead. So using a curve like this for performance versus number of subgroups and performance versus time is a good way to determine the optimal number of subgroups. So that will wrap up uh, this video. I hope you find this video useful and learn something new from it. Stay tuned for more videos from PyML Studio channel. Until next time.